everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Alex and today I'm gonna to be bringing you the Netflix book tag. Now off the top of my head, I cannot remember who created this tag, but I will leave their name and the original video down in the description box below for you guys. This tag just has questions that plays off of categories or things that you would see as you're scrolling through Netflix. So without further ado, let's get started. Number one is recently watched, the last book that you finished reading. Now I am pre-filming this video a little bit, so in real time, the last book that I finished reading was Other Words From Home by Jasmine Orga. Absolutely loved it, gave it a five out of five stars. Go and check out my June wrap up if you want more information on that book and the synopsis and all that good stuff. But since I am pre-filming, obviously that's no longer accurate, but by the time this video goes up, I'll post the name down at the bottom, the name of the last book that I finished. Number two is Top Picks, a book that has been recommended to you based on books that you have previously liked. And for this one, I'm gonna go with Under Rose Tannen Skies by Louise Gornall. Now, one of my favorite genres is hard-hitting contemporaries. I love stories that tackle deeper issues. And I don't know the full synopsis on the story, but in that harder-hitting contemporary genre, this is a name that I've heard pop up numerous times, and I really hope to pick it up sometime in the future. Number three is recently added, the last book that you bought. Now, if you've been on my channel for a while, you'll know that I very, very rarely purchase books. So I don't have an answer for this one because I genuinely do not remember it the last time that I purchased a book. Number four is popular on Netflix, books that everyone knows about. Two books that you have read and two books that you haven't read or have no interest in reading. So for the two books that I have read, I'm going to go with The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid and Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. These are two books that I read towards the beginning of the year. I really, really loved them both. I will say I liked Evelyn Hugo more than Children of Blood and Bone, but they're both very, very different novels with their own merits, both very talented authors. And But I feel like everybody has been hyping these two up. Everybody has read them by now. Everybody has loved them by now. My two other books are just two books that I haven't read yet, but I do have an interest in picking them up. The first one is Vicious by V.E. Schwab, and the second one is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. These books are both on my TBR list for this year, so they will definitely be getting done, but these are two that everybody and their mom knows and loves, and I just haven't gotten to them yet. Number five is Comedies, a funny book. And for this one, I'm gonna go with The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This is a relatively recent release, and this follows our main character, Olive, who at the beginning of the novel, her twin sister is getting married. Olive's soon-to-be brother-in-law has a brother named Ethan, who is the best man at the wedding, and Olive and Ethan hate each other. Well, at the wedding, everybody except for Olive and Ethan winds up getting terrible food poisoning from the reception buffet. So Olive's sister insists that Olive and Amy take the non refined honeymoon trip to Maui together. This is a rom-com in a book. It is the perfect hate to love romance. A ton of people have been hyping this one up already. Christina Lauren is an incredibly talented author duo and I've only read two of their books so far but this one was a knock out of the park. Five star read for me. It made me laugh out loud multiple times. The audiobook was incredible. There's so many funny moments. I was laughing out loud in this book and it was everything that you could ever want for the summer. So if you need something like that and haven't picked it up yet, definitely go and give it a read. Number six is Dramas, a character who is a drama queen or king. And for this one, I'm gonna go with Hawthorne from the Morgan Crow series. If you're unfamiliar, this is a middle grade series that follows our main character, Morgan Crow, who has always been blamed for every bad thing that happens in her town. And she has always been told that she is going to die on her 11th birthday. But on the eve of her 11th birthday, this man named Jupiter North comes and swoops her away to Nevermore, where she goes to this magical school and winds up having a ton of adventures. Her best friend in the story's name is Hawthorne, and he is a precious little cinnamon roll, but he is so dramatic. He takes everything to the top, times 100. I love him, but he is so incredibly dramatic. Another honorable mention for this question that I just thought of is Grover from the Percy Jackson series. Percy's best friend is completely a drama king as well. Number seven is Animated, a book with cartoons on the cover. And for this one, I'm gonna be throwing it way back and I'm going to say Hyperbole and a Half. It has been so long since I've read this that I don't even remember the author's name, but I will put it down here on the bottom. But this book is hysterical. These comics were really, really popular on the internet for a while back a couple years ago. And this book has a lot of those comics in there. It's really hilarious and really tackles some things that the author found herself struggling with as well. It's a really nice balance, hilarious, laugh out loud, 
about. This is one that is pretty thick, but since it's all cartoons, you fly through it. It was hilarious. If you're looking for a good backlist read, I would definitely go for this one. Number eight is Watch It Again, a book or book series that you want to reread. And for this one, I'm going to go with the classic Harry Potter, which I'm not going to get it out, but you can see it over my shoulder. I actually never read Harry Potter as a child. I read Harry Potter for the very first time as a senior in high school. I'm now 24 years old and I have never reread it. So I have this gorgeous edition back here that I am dying to read. That isn't even the one that I originally read. So I'm dying to crack those open. Every year I say that I'm gonna reread it and I haven't yet, but I really just need to get back into that world. Number nine is Documentaries, a nonfiction book that you would recommend to everyone. And for this one, I'm gonna go with Hamilton, The Revolution. Now Hamilton obviously is an incredibly popular phenomenon. I've been lucky enough to see the musical, absolutely fell in love with it even more than I already was. And I feel like this book did a really, really nice nice job of bringing in the backstories of the creators and the crew and the cast and everybody that went into making this musical what it is. It really delves deep not only into the history itself but also the individual elements of putting the play together such as writing the songs, writing the script, getting the set, getting the props, hair, makeup, costumes, everything that you could want to know about a musical is all woven together so well into this novel. If you listen to it on audiobook, Mariska Hartske actually narrates it and she does an incredible job it's phenomenal. If you are a fan of Hamilton or musicals in general, regardless, whoever you are, if you haven't read this one yet, just go pick it up. It's a quick, light read, and it just, it's so interesting, especially if you're a fan of Hamilton. It's just so good. Number 10 is Action and Adventure, an action-packed book. And for this one, I'm gonna go with Fallen Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes. This is the first book in, I believe, a six book series, and I have heard it pegged as Game of Thrones for YA, which I would completely agree with. Since it's been a while since I've read this one, I don't remember all the little bits of detail in the plot, but you do follow a ton of characters in this fantasy world that is heavy with magic and political intrigue. Definitely something to look into. I think this is a fairly underrated fantasy series in the YA world, but if you haven't checked it out yet and you need some action, this is the book to go for. Number 11 is New Releases, a book that just came out or will be coming out soon that you can't wait to get to. And for this one, I'm gonna go with Wilder Girls by Rory Power. This book follows the Raxter School for Girls that has been under quarantine for 18 months because this virus called the Tox has come in, invaded their school, killed all the teachers, and is now infecting the students. And our main character's best friend goes missing and she has to break quarantine and go out to try to find her friend and obviously things aren't what they seem. This book sounds a little bit different than the things that I would usually pick up, but the cover is gorgeous. I've heard nothing but great things from some reviewers that I really, really trust, and I'm just very excited to read it, to try to kind of expand my reading taste a little bit and see where it takes us. And finally, number 12, Max, is tag some people. For this tag, I'm only going to be tagging two people. I'm going to tag Dancing Lawn and Elise Reads and Speaks, and I will leave links to both of their channels down in the description box below. So that is it for the Netflix book tag. If you want to answer any of these questions, I will leave all the questions in the description and go ahead and drop all your thoughts in the comments down below. As always, I love to chat with you guys down there. So until next time, bye!